Let's get started with tech stuff time. So before we come to the circle, I want you to start getting those ideas in your head, right? So I want you to get your journeys books out, if you took notes in your journals, in your post-its. And I'm going to want the blue people with the blue strip on your desk to turn around and talk with your group about what the book made you think about. What could you maybe share in our class discussion? Um, that Lewis had um, the best eyesight um, than, uh, of the whole group. Yeah, and this is about the two to three, four days to go around the and that And that good yeah. eyesight actually can come in handy. What could come in handy? The eyesight, because you can, um, sharp eyesight um, can actually um, see stuff that are far away and some people can't see him and so the person who has sharp eyesight um, is really actually has he has like um, something really useful to use because if there's like danger yeah. he can alert them. So you think sharp eyesight would be good when you're if someone was exploring it would be good yeah. to have someone in the group with good with eyesight. Good eyesight. Yeah. Oh wow lots of thinking. All right Julio. I had um, that Lewis and Clark went off 24 days to go all around the farm. Okay. So that surprised you? Why did that? Why was that surprising? Because <coughs> it took 24 days to get all, all around the farm. Does that seem like a long time to go around, to, yeah. to just to go around something? Yeah, like six months. Yes. Yeah, almost a month. Like a little bit less than a month to just go around one thing. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Michael, you have something to add? Yeah. Uh, I was also surprised when uh, they had to carry all the heavy boats and the supplies with them to the fall, um, to the waterfall. Yeah. So they had to walk 24 days, but they also had to carry all their supplies for the 24 days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carlos. Um, I have something to add to Michael and Julio of the river that <coughs> that it did take a long trip um, to um, to go around 24 day um, 24 days is a really a long time to just cross like just go around it if they just crossed it um, it just like Pauline said in our group that they would just all die because it's like six stories high I think she said. So it's really dangerous, and I um, also wanted to say that um, Lewis had a really good eyesight, um, so it actually did come useful w when going around the falls. Okay. How would that be useful for going around the falls? Um, because the um, there can be any, pr and there can be like predators and you know, tribes and all that, because sharp eyesight is really um, good. So, Mishaya, you have something to add? Um, I was also surprised when they had to go around because I felt so bad for them because they were like exhausted and they were like tired and stuff. So they had already been traveling before they got to this point, right? So we think of like, well, 24 days, okay, that's a long time, that maybe the, that's a long time, but they had already been traveling for a long time before that, right? So bring into um, thinking about how long it took them or, and how exhausted they were were already before they had to travel an extra 24 m miles with all their things just to go around the falls. I never thought of that before. Nice. Um, Natalia, you have something to add? Mm -hmm. I was also on Sacagawea. It was hard probably for her because she had her baby with her. And to go around that river and stuff, like babies, like we were talking about in our group, babies need a lot of good care and it would be hard to go through all that especially with the baby. Yeah. Was she was she traveling with them at this point? Do we have evidence that she was traveling with them yeah. when they were crossing the falls? Well. I noticed that some students are looking back at that part so that what page? 637. Yeah. Devante do you uh, See the, where there's evidence. In the picture, it shows Sakaju, uh, Sakaju, she's pointing at the falls, and uh, Lewis and Clark in a slave. They're like, uh, 
Sacred Zoo is like pointing that they might die in the fall, so they probably have to go around it. Okay. Yeah. And since I know that this is a narrative nonfiction, and we've been learning about how in nonfiction the pictures and the captions that gives us lots of information, I would expect that this. Um, picture is a way of giving us information, even though it doesn't say right here in the text that we could probably be pretty sure that Sacagawea was with them and that this picture is placed here to give us that information. Nice, good eye. I'm glad that you paid attention to what was happening in that picture, too. Um, Melissa. Um, I'm going to add on to Natalia's. She said, like, Sacagawea had to also carry a ba baby and, like, um, she had to give the, give out to the baby, and she also had to take care of like Lewis and Clark finding food, and um, as well as having the job of a baby to do. How did you know that she had all those responsibilities? How, um, do, you, how do you know that she also had to help them find food? So it said on page. Oh, on page 638, it said that carrying her baby boy on her back, Sacagawea won the admiration of the crew. She carefully <laughs> scanned the riverbank to find edible fruit roots and fruit. Okay, great. And it said those foods provided a welcome relief for the customary diet of meat and water. So you imagine that because of her, they were able to eat a variety. So not only was she carrying the baby, but also helping them get through or find the way and find food. So she had, she had a lot of jobs, right? Yeah, I didn't really think about that, but that's true. Uh, Kushi, hold on. Kushi. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I want to add on to Alyssa, and um, it says a trader and his wife, a Native American named Sacagawea, joined the expedition when it resumed its journey in April 1805. So we know that she was in the journey. Oh, so we can assume since they gave us this little background information at the start that from here on, Sacagawea is part of the core. Because it says here on May 26th, that's when they were crossing it, so yeah. So that kind of connects with what Devante said then too. So we have in the picture, but we also got background information before we started reading to say from then on she was part of the expedition. Yeah. Good, reading detectives, that's awesome. So let me pose these questions to you so we can get a little bit of talking about this before I send you out to write. Can you hang in there with me for another just 10, min 10 minutes to talk about these questions? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take us back to viewpoint. So we were talking a little bit about viewpoint, right? It's not why the author wrote, but how the author feels about something. So we are going to have to find clues to be able to answer these questions about how the author feels about certain things uh, involving this topic. So the first one, is how does the author feel about Lewis and Clark? Right? Not that one. How does the author feel about Lewis and Clark? And in order to, to answer this question, you're gonna have to prove it to me. If you are going to suggest that you think the author thinks that Lewis and Clark were brave, I would want evidence from the text that we just read, or clues that suggest that the author thinks that the uh, that Lewis and Clark are brave or good explorers. Um, do you think we can work together in finding some clues that would help to answer this question? Yeah. What clues did the author give us? Authors have choice, right? They can decide what they want to put in a book and what they want to leave out. Right? Just like we have choice when we're talking about things. If you're talking about a teacher that you really liked, you might share all the things you really liked about that teacher and maybe leave out the times that she was grumpy or she didn't give you a good grade on something and just focus on the things that you really liked when you're sharing about something. Authors make choices. They choose to put certain facts in and maybe leave certain facts out. So I'm wondering what facts and examples and things that this author included that would help give us clues about how he feels about Lewis and Clark and their journey. So will you take a minute and turn and talk to the person sitting next to you about what you're thinking about this question? What do you think the author, how do you think the author feels about Lewis and Clark? I think he, uh, he, uh, he, he decided to, like, 
All right, let's make our transition to our seats. I want you to keep your journeys books out, your post-its, all your notes you're going to need for writing. Let's all help to move our desks back to normal. Uh, Natalia, can I get your help um, to pass these out? Yes, oh, just so nice. It's coming off. You couldn't see me because I have another shirt on. I got double shirts every day. get us started on this quickly because now that you have all your ideas in your head, I really want you to have an opportunity to put this on paper. And I was able to hear lots of your thinking, but I didn't get to hear from all of you. And we just don't have enough time. We could have kept talking all morning. But this, your writing, gives me another chance to be able to hear your thinking. And I care about what all of you have to say. So right now, I really need your pencils to be down. And you need to be looking forward so you can hear my message to you, please. I want you to know how important your writing is to me and that this is a way of sharing your thinking with me, um, just like you did in text talk time, but in writing. And we just got all these ideas, and now I want you to put them onto the paper. So I'm going to put the sentence strips back up that we were talking about. The questions on your paper? are the same questions we just talked about. So nothing is new here. The first one we talked about was, how does the author feel about Lewis and Clark? So I had trouble coming up with a sentence starter for this one because there's lots of different ways to start this. I think the author feels, or um, the author is excited about Lewis and Clark because, so I had a, trouble coming up with with a way to start this, because I think there's lots of different ways of starting. But I heard lots of really good ideas that make me feel really confident that I'm going to read um, lots of great paragraphs about this. The other thing that we talked about was how, what is the author's viewpoint? Not that one. Pardon me. What is the author's viewpoint about exploring? We talked a lot about that. You guys found a lot of clues that shared the author's emotions. Um, I think Alan was saying um, that it takes, that you have to be strong to be, was it when we were talking about yeah. exploring? And we found some clues of when they were carrying their supplies and as a way of proving that you have to be strong to be an explorer. So I did come up with a little clue sentence starter here. The author thinks exploring is mm. And then just like we usually do, you will use evidence. So you might prove that by saying on page it says in paragraph. Oh, in paragraph. In the paragraph Nice. In the paragraph on page, it says, or maybe you just want to, to say in a clear way that you are about to prove this. I know this because. In sentence, it says. The big idea, though, is that you are going to give me your big ideas, your topic sentence. Tell me what the author thinks about exploring, in your opinion, and then prove it. Give me evidence that helps me to really understand that you know what you're talking about, that I should believe you. Persuade me. And then last but not least, this is, some I think, maybe the most fun, because this is about you. What is your viewpoint about Lewis and Clark and their journey? What do you think? So I started this sentence, too. Um, I wrote, I think Lewis and Clark were mm, because, although the whole paragraph you're going to write is the because. So maybe you just want to make a bold statement and not even put because in that first sentence and just say, I think Lewis and Clark were brave. brave. And then prove it in the rest of your paragraph with details, Michael, that help to explain that. 
what do you think? I, you're going to tell me all about what you think the author thinks and the author's feelings, the author's viewpoint. Now, at the end, I want you to tell me about your viewpoint because your viewpoint matters. Is that clear? Yeah. You know the drill? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get started. Please spend um, a good time, or uh, spend as much time on this as you need. I really want you to work, we have from now until recess to work on this. So do your very best. And I'm really looking, like I already see Natalia's got her notes set out. She was looking back at her notes. Use the clues and the evidence you already have found. Look in your book, use that evidence in your writing. All right, I would like Michael, Alan, Ali, Jesus, and Brandon with me at the back table. All right, so let's get started. Will you, before we start answering the questions, will you guys remind me what viewpoint is that we talk about? Because all these questions focus on viewpoint. So can we get some synonyms? This is kind of a fancy word, let's get some synonyms. And you know what, because we're such a small group, you don't even have to raise your hand. So, and I noticed that Ali was looking back at the poster we made, and that's a viewpoint. Let's talk about that, you right? Think so, about, like, opinion. Opinion is like something you it's think like that what is. you see in your, in your mind. Like yeah. what you think. What you think and what you are seeing. So Sometimes. from your says, point of view. Yeah. 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 It's like your opinion, not it's someone it's else's. Yeah. So I'm hearing a lot of you, your, your thinking. Is it always just you, though? No. Because no. right here it says, like the second one, it says, what is the author's viewpoint? Okay. Yeah, like she can talk about other people. And, and what talk they about. think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what they think. So it's like opinion or how like somebody feels about something, yeah. their feeling. All right, so now that I know that we are all, we all feel pretty good about this, so when it talks about what is the author's viewpoint about exploring, what we really just want to know is what do they think about exploring, yes. right? How do they feel about exploring? Do they like it? Do they not like it? And then can we find clues from the text to help us back up our opinion? If we say that we think the explorer likes, or that the author likes exploring, could we find clues to support that, evidence to prove that. So let's look at the first one. I noticed Brandon said, oh, I have tons of ideas for this. Well, can we look at this question and make sure that we know what we're going to answer? Because we're going to get ready for writing. I'm glad that you brought your pencils. We're here to work on this writing. So can, Brandon, maybe you want to read that question so we all are clear about it? How does the author feel about Lewis and Clark? Okay. So you said you have some ideas about how the author feels about Lewis and Clark? Yeah. I just realized I forgot my book. You read it? Can you go grab my book? See, it's on that. Sorry. Yeah. Alan, right under the smart board. With those papers on top of it, you see it? Thank you. I put a lot of post-its on my notes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. okay, so I'm going to get this ready to sort of record some of our ideas. So, what, what are some... You should do like a spider web, like put one like that, you can write a lot of stuff about them. Yeah, I'm going to write tons of our ideas down here that you guys could use when you put it on paper. So, what do you think? How do you think the author feels about Lewis and Clark? And that they're really brave, they're like, um, they're like, um, they're not like going like, saying like, I don't want to do this anymore. They don't change their mind. They're just they like, like, we're going to do this, and we're going to go there. I don't okay. think they ever give up. Yeah. They're persevering. Oh. I think that that's what you were trying to say in text talk time, right? That you were like, it, they keep going. They, they don't give up. They, they persevere. That was a great word. So we think that maybe the author feels that Lewis and Clark is brave, that they don't They're give up. They persevere. Mm -hmm. They're determined. Before we start writing, let's get our ideas out. Let's talk about our ideas. When we talk about things, it helps get our brain ready for writing. So when I always tell you to turn and talk, it's because I'm, it's like a brain trick. I'm trying to get your brain ready for writing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, as I've learned that by talking, it helps get my mind ready for the words I want to use when I'm writing. So I want to talk about these things before we actually start writing them down. So one word that I 
thought of, Michael, that might go along with what you're thinking of is determined. When somebody keeps working on something and they don't give up. Did something happen in here that made you think that they were they kept going and they yeah. didn't turn back. Was something, uh, did something hard come yeah, up? Yeah, because of the waterfalls. Yeah. Oh, the waterfalls. Yeah. So why would? So the waterfall was in their way. They had this big barrier. But did that stop them? No. 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 What did they do about I think it? So. What happened with that waterfall? They came to this waterfall that was six stories tall. They went around it. Yeah. They went around it. Yeah, instead of climbing it up, because it would take more possible. Lewis and Clark, the cruise area. How many times they took? They just went. So if someone comes up to a barrier that they think it's stopping them, but then they find a way around it or a way to solve that problem, does that tell you that the person is determined and yeah. doesn't doesn't give up? They're confident that they're gonna make it. Yeah, huh? Adding 24 days onto their journey when you don't have tons of supplies, you must feel pretty confident that you're gonna make it to the end, right? Yes. And that that everybody's going to survive. It's pretty dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. um, it said that, um, that maybe they weren't worried because, like, they said that William Clark had perhaps the best eyesight of any of the crew, crew members. And, they, and maybe Lewis thought they would make it because Clark had the best eyes, maybe. And if they, he saw the or where the Pacific Ocean was, then they would get there much more easier because Clark has the best eyes. Okay. Does that connect to, does that help prove that, that Lewis and Clark were brave? Yeah. You think it's, it's an important fact though, right? Yeah. But maybe that would be best for a different, a different part of your writing. Be thinking about what clues would support that they were brave or that they were determined they kept going. Oh. You shared a lot of things with me. Should we write like first? Or did second? you decide to talk about how they're brave? Can you can you think of one example you read about where they were brave? Can you think of? Can, do you think you could find an example from the book? And they were also determined because Saka Julia helped them translate and all that. And they got stuff like new stuff, like stuff they can use on their on their journey. Like, uh, so they couldn't, they couldn't communicate with other Indian tribes, but they were determined to make it work, so they found Sacagawea who could translate for them. Yeah, and then they made it work, they solved their problem. And Sacagawea was super, super raised also. Yeah. I'm going to make sure you get some of those ideas down. Alan, can you read to me what you have so far? About their being careless and proud over their variation, it's when if they went to the Rockies, and it was in my rain and snow, and guys would make like make like nice. Yeah, it would be really brave to go in there. If you can find another detail that helps explain why the author thought Lewis and Clark was were brave, Ali, it looks like you're finding some good evidence. And remember, it's added bonus if you can, we're working on quoting, that if you can write on page, blah, 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 it says. Hey, Alan, did you finish everything you need to finish? This looks like, I'm get, when I read your paper, I'm gonna, want some, I'm gonna wanna know more. You're gonna leave me hanging. I wonder if you can add a little bit more. You have lots of time, and I'd like to hear your thinking. How do you wilderness? Wilderness? Wilderness is a cool word because it has wild in it. Like out in the wild. Wildness. I see that word wild, where things grow wild and they're not. Fine. Mm -hmm. That one's a tricky one because there's a B in there that you don't hear at the end. Fine. What are you writing with it? Who's climbing? Was it dark? No, for it. They climbed. Yeah. And climbing is usually when you're, like, climb a ladder. Usually when we're talking about mountains, we talk about hiked through, because it means you're going up but walking. So you might say Lewis and Clark hiked. And I'm making it easy because we're talking about the past, right? Something that already happened. 
Christmas food. Can you read it to me? From the beginning? Yeah. And the Arthur thought Lewis and Clark were determined first. They had to cross around the waterfall, but that didn't stop them. Page 637. Then they crossed the Rocky Mountains, but that didn't stop them either. Page 638. Nice. I like how you added that, that that didn't stop them either. You're connecting that to determine, so there's no doubt in my mind. You have, you have some, you give me two details. I usually think of like main idea, detail, 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 wrap up as like a pretty solid paragraph. I wonder if you could add, find one more yeah. detail to really prove it to me. Uh, I'm super, super, super proud of you. You shared so much good thinking, and I'm really excited to read your writing. Just what I got to hear with the small group that I was in, they came up with so many good clues and evidence to support their thinking. I was so proud of them, and I know that this you're going to do so well in, in middle school. You know that your teachers are going to ask you to do this, and this will be no problem for you. You know how to find evidence in the text to support your thinking, and I'm so proud to be your teacher.